Amen. How many remember that day this morning? Amen. You put your hands together and you help us sing. Let's sing that second verse again. It's good to see Brother Aiden Martin in the service with us this morning.
a blessing it is to be in the Lord's house. Great job, sister. Why don't you just come on back right now and sing that second verse again. I'm telling you, you know, we ought to be lifting our hands and praising the Lord. How many of you are born again? Do you understand what that means? That means you've been redeemed. It means you've been rescued. The ransom's been paid. And you know, I don't want to sit through a dead service this morning. I want to enjoy it. I don't want to endure it. Let's enjoy this today. Okay? Let's worship the Lord in spirit and truth. I tell you, God's good to us, isn't he? He's, I don't know about you, but he's better to me than I've ever deserved. And I'm glad he's here this morning. Why don't you stand with us and you sing. We're going to sing this last verse and then we'll get our first time visitors and welcome you here to the church. Sing it, sister. Amen. Wasn't that better? Oh, I'm telling you, God inhabits the praises of his people. And I want to praise him. If you're a first-time visitor here this morning, could you throw your hand up? Just God bless you. Thank you for being here right here on the front row next to Miss Gail. Right here. Thank you, Brother Ronnie. God bless you. Anyone else? First-time visitor in the balcony right there next to Arsel up there. Right there. Thank you, Brother Norman. Anyone else? We don't want to miss you. Let's give our visitors a hand for being with us today. God bless you. If you would fill that out and drop it in the offering plate. And, uh, and also, um, if you're standing next to them right now, could you just shake their hand and say, welcome to First Free Will. Could you do that? Love on them a little bit. There you go. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. That's wonderful. We're going to have our ushers come at this time to receive this morning's tithes and offerings. As they're coming, I want to remind you next Sunday is going to be homecoming. You want to invite your friends and your neighbors to be with us. Going to have dinner on the ground here. And then the primitive quartet's going to be with us at. That night, Brother Keith Watkins from Pleasant Hill is going to be uh, preaching for us next Sunday morning. It's going to be a great, great time. And, uh, I'm going to ask Brother Eric if he would come bless the offering for us. And let's give unto the Lord.
for this day that you've graciously blessed us with, an opportunity to, to gather in your house and give you praise and honor, Lord, for everything that you've done for us. And Lord, we just want to be a blessing to you. And, and Father, just give, last week was last week, today's a new day, Lord, and just give the preacher an unction to preach and just give us a fresh anointing, Father, that, that the Spirit will flow again from breast to breast. Father, we just thank you, Father, that it goes from the balcony to the floor, left to right. Father, we just thank you for the many blessings of life. Father, the ones that are sick, Father, you know who they are. Father, just heal them in your way, Lord. We just thank you. There's unspoken requests, Lord, but we just thank you, Father, that, that you know them, Father, that we'll speak them to you, and, Father, you will answer in your way. Lord, we just ask that this offering, Father, that we use it to further your kingdom, Father, to spread the gospel on, on, on a planet Earth, Father, that you've blessed us to be a part of, Father, that we can go uh, to the east, to the west, and to the uttermost parts of Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth, Lord, for, to, to spread your kingdom and, and, and your word for us. In your name we pray. Amen.
was told that he would come and the race he would run it would end on an old rugged cross but when they laid him in the tomb the power of the lord went in the room He's coming back someday to take us home with him to stay where his glory forever will share. And when that first trumpet sounds, we will all be glory bound. Oh, Church, he's coming back someday to take us home with him to stay where his glory forever will share. And when that first trumpet sounds, we will all be glory.
going to sing this song for a little guy right there. Throw your hand up, son. He said, I want you to sing this morning. And I don't know if the band knows the song he wanted, so we're going to do this one for you, okay? Bible says, sir, for the little children to come unto me. Listen, I, I wouldn't offend one of those little ones that if a kid asked me to do something for the Lord in church, I'm going to do it. So I hope this blesses him. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice tell the same old lies If you're trying to feel the same old holes inside There's a better life There's a better life If you got pain He's a pain taker If you feel lost He's a way maker If you need freedom or saving He's a prison shaking savior If you got chains Well he's a chain breaker Aren't you glad of that today? We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night And we've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight And we've all run to things we know just ain't right When there's a better life There's a better life If you got pain And he's a pain if you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. Let him break those chains this morning. If you believe it, if you receive it. If you can't feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can't feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. Oh, if you need freedom or saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, well, he's a chain. Well, he's a chain Can you give the Lord some praise and just remain standing? Psalms 23. Amen, amen. I look around and I see things that God has done for people. And when I think about Brother Tony Wilcox over here on that front row weeping, He's drinking water and, and, and losing it at the same time. I think, you know, that song must mean more to him than a lot of other ones because he took his pain from cancer, took the cancer away. He got him out of prison. I mean, I mean you just go down the line. Made a way for him when there wasn't a way. We got a dose of that from Brother Dwight last Sunday when he got up and exhorted about how God got him out of jail. And listen, maybe all of us can't say we've been in jail, not in a physical jail or prison. But you know what? I probably should have been several times. But I'll tell you what, I was in something worse than that. It was a sin-made prison, and Satan had me bound. And I'm telling you, I, had, I was like old Samson. I, I was bound, and I had to do some, some binding and some grinding during that time, and blinding went on. But I'm glad that God set me free from that. And if you're here today and you're, uh, you're saved 
and you know you're saved, you ought to rejoice over that because you've been delivered. If you're not saved, then we want to extend an opportunity for you, an invitation at any time during this service. You come up here and pray, and somebody will meet you here, and we'll pray with you. It won't interrupt the service. It will enhance the service if you do that. That's why we're here. But not only that, we are here to worship the Lord. And I know some of you, I got to thinking, Brother Kyle, yesterday, why people come to church? Well, God commands us to, amen? Amen. Hebrews 10, 25, but not only does he command us to, there are people that have walked through the doors of this church this morning that come expecting to get something from God. Something. They, they, you, some of you, 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 maybe your spouse don't even know it. And you've been going through some times in your mind, traveling places you've not traveled before and, and, you, and you need some help. And I'm glad I know the one that can help you today. It's not me. I can't help you. But I'll tell you what, God's Word can help you. God's Spirit can help you. And we can get alongside of you and help shoulder that burden in the name of the Lord. That's what we're for. Psalms chapter 23, we've been here for the last three services, I think. And you pray as we try to preach this morning. I want to read this, these six verses, and then we'll do our best to bring a message. The Lord is my shepherd. Man, that sounded so good. I'm going to say it again. The Lord is my shepherd. I said the Lord is my shepherd. (laughs) I shall not walk. Glory to God. I'm glad he's my need meter. I'm glad he's my shepherd for a number of reasons. But throughout this, I I found some things. He's got something that liquor can't do. Old Jack Daniels don't hold the light to what he's got. Amen. Miller, Miller Light ain't got nothing on this. It's not even in the same category. Vodka, booze, dope, everything that the world's got to offer, it can't come close to this living water. I mean, it springs up into everlasting life inside of us. I'm talking about the good stuff. That good stuff, hallelujah. I'm glad I'm drinking. Drinking from my saucer because my cup's overflowed. The Bible says, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You know why they comfort that little lamb? Because of whose hand they're in. (laughs) You better get a hold of that and chew a while. If that rod was just laying there and that staff was laying there and there wasn't a shepherd, it wouldn't be any good. But boy, when it's in the hand of the shepherd, oh, whenever that rod is in the hand of that shepherd, he'll correct you in a way to let you know that he loves you. When that rod is in his hand, he'll use that to count you and caress you as none other can. And then he goes on to say, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. There it is. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray. Kind Jesus, Lord, as we preach today on life in the Psalms, God, I pray that you help me. God, you know that I'm one of your sheep. And Lord Jesus, I have tendencies just like those natural sheep. And God, I pray that you help me today. I pray that you heal us today. God, I pray that you guide us today. And God, I pray, Lord, for that one that's not saved. God, that they be saved. And God, above all things, Lord... Help us to get a little life in us today, Lord, that we hadn't had in a while. And God, I pray for that sheep that's struggling. Strengthen them. And we'll praise you for what you do. Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You can be seated if you can. We 
have talked about life in the Psalms, about how this Psalm is written for, for the living. We use it more for the dead than we do the living, but I'm glad that there is life in the Psalms, life in the song. You know, anybody that's alive ought to live a life of psalm, song, a life where they worship and praise, a life where they have something worth living for. And I'm glad that we had that in Jesus Christ. We talked about the possession. The Lord is my shepherd. What a great possession that we have in the Lord being our shepherd. Not only that, our provision. I'm glad that we have a shepherd that provides for his sheep. Everything that we need, he has provided for us in the Word of God and out of the Word of God. I'm glad that he has everything that we need. He's got the resources. you got bills that need to be paid, and you're doing all you can. I'm glad, according to Philippians 4.19, that he will meet our needs according to his riches and glory by and through his son, Christ Jesus. I'm glad that he has the power to do that. And then we talked about the divine progression, how that there's leadership. I'm glad that we have that leadership in the Lord. Not only that, we also found that he is the divine physician. The Bible says that he carries with him this oil because he anoints those little heads of the sheep with it. And I'm glad not only is he the carrier of that oil, but he is the oil. Praise the Lord. He come from the other side of the gate of heaven to come to this present world that you and I might be able to find our healing and find our purpose and that his plan might be revealed in us that we might trust in his promises because he loves us. It doesn't get any better than that when we think about being the sheep of his pastor. He is our shepherd and he loves us. Our shepherd is also our great physician. He restoreth my soul. That eastern shepherd carried with him that little bag of ointment and medicine for his sheep. And when one of his sheep got injured, when one got torn, then he would take that wound and he would pour oil in that wound and he would bind up that wound. Kind of makes you think of that good Samaritan. That good Samaritan. But I'm glad we've got a good shepherd, amen. There he would take that little lamb that was injured and he would begin to treat that lamb. I told the other night as I preached that that shepherd would take that same oil and he would apply it to the heads of the sheep. One thing I didn't tell you, those bot flies will come and they will try to lay eggs in the eyes of the sheep and they would hatch and those little larvae would climb through the nose and through the eyes and get in the brain and cause severe inflammation. But did you know that as soon as that shepherd applied the oil to the head of that sheep, it was immediate. It was healing, instant healing right then, divine healing by the hand of the shepherd. Now, I don't know about you today, but you know there's a lot of flies out there. We call them demons. And they're trying to plant things in our ears and plant things in our eyes and plant things in our heart. But it all starts with just trying to get in. And if it gets in, it wants to contaminate the head. Thank God I'm glad for the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit of God that will keep those demons away from me, keep those thoughts away from me, keep all that stinking thinking out of my head. That's why we've got to be in the Word and thank God the Word gets in us and therefore whenever we ask for that anointing, I'm glad that he's got plenty of oil today. He's got plenty of oil to apply to all the sheep that we might be saved, that we might be protected, that we might be secure. Thanks be unto God. I'm glad that oil is a type of the Holy Spirit of God and every demon has to flee at the oil of the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout amen. Glory, glory, glory. 
I'm telling you, we need more anointing in this day. We're living in the dark of the day, the more anointing that we need. Somebody say amen. Listen, I'm telling you, I'm getting ready to really drop a plow and preach here. We have got to understand some things in this present world that we're living in. We're not supposed to be isolated, but we are to be insulated. How are we going to be insulated? Number one, by the blood of the Lamb, and number two, by that unction, by that anointing, by that oil that comes from the hand of the Lord. Boy, I'm telling you, I like it whenever that, that, that shepherd passes by and he knows what I need. But you know that shepherd will never be able to anoint the head of that sheep until that sheep gets close to him. Let me tell you something. That devil, that wolf, he does not fear any sheep. But I'll tell you who he does fear. He fears that shepherd. And if that sheep is near that shepherd, then that devil can't get near you. Oh, just abide with him. I'm glad that song, that old song in that red back hymnal, he abides, he abides. Hallelujah, he abides with me. Night and day, he abides with me. Aren't you glad that we don't have a God that leaves us and then comes back and leaves us and then comes back? I know what some of you might be thinking. Well, he did leave. He did leave us. Oh, but he sent the oil. Thank God to protect us. He sent the Holy Spirit to protect us till he comes back physically and takes us home to him again. Jesus is our physician. Not only that, that oil that's applied will also be poured in those holes where those serpents are at and those serpents can't come up through that oil. Did you know a serpent won't bite that sheep? That, that serpent wants to inject its venom on the nose of the lambs. That's what he wants to do because he wants to kill the sheep. And did you know the Bible says that the devil, he walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour? He comes to what? He comes to steal. He comes to kill and comes to destroy and that serpent comes and he wants to bite that lamb. And you know, there's been a lot. I'm about to get on shouting grounds right here. There's been a lot of times when some of you, some of you have been out in the field and you've been just going along and you didn't know that there was going to be that serpent over there. You had no idea that that serpent was going to be there. But because you come to the house of God and because you got under the authority of the preaching of the word of God and because the mighty shepherd, the good shepherd, the great shepherd, the coming shepherd, he laid his hand on you and anointed you that whenever that serpent picked you out and thought, I'm going to get that lamb, he's a little too far. She's a little too far from the shepherd. I'm going to sink my teeth in that one. I'm going to destroy their mind. I'm going to destroy the body. I'm going to destroy the soul. But all of a sudden whenever that serpent got so close he got a whiff of glory and when he smelt glory that old serpent said I can't touch that one. I, I can't get that. Maybe he went from this section and then he went over to this section. Oh, I can't get in that section. And then he went over here. I can't get there. I can't get in that home. I can't get in that car. I can't get in that class. I can't get in that work. I can't get in that balcony. Why? Because they've been anointed and we need more of the anointing of the power of the Holy Spirit of God. The darker the day, the more anointing that we need. Listen, friend, the louder the world cries, the more anointing we've got to need because there's a lost and dying generation out there and it's going to take the anointing because the anointing will break the yoke, Kelly. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my. Where are we even at? You know, these sheep, they, 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 they get sick. And sheep, they're, they're, they're sheep. And they're going to get hurt time to time. They're defenseless. And Brother Chad and some of them, they'll get, they'll get a eye disease and they have to get treated and then some they'll get an ear disease and it'll have to be treated some will get a skin disease and they have to get that matter of fact when they get this one certain type of, of disease in their, their, their skin it's called scab and when they get this scab let me tell you how that, that, that sheep survives that scab he takes that sheep and he gets a Big barrel, and he fills it with oil. And he fills that, 
that barrel with oil. And he picks up that little lamb and he drops him in that big old tub or baptistry of oil. And when he does, he takes it. And he's got him in there and everything's okay. But then he applies his hand to the head. And the head of that little lamb will not go down. He will fight it. He does not want it. You know, the hardest thing about us as God's sheep is our head. We're just hard-headed sometimes. But that shepherd applies some force and he pushes that head under. Boy, but when that head goes under, I'm telling you the scab is gone. Aren't you glad when the scab of sin got gone in your life? Whenever you got put down, you got put under. And praise the Lord, you, de- you never de- had been put down that way. Because the way he puts you down, he's lifting you up at the same time. Praise be unto God. And there that lamb got healed. Sometimes they get sore foot. But I'm glad no matter what we are stricken with, no matter what we are facing, physically, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, we have a God that can. He can heal. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is God, our healer. And I'm glad that he's still healing today. Someone asked me one day, do you still believe that God heals? I said, well, the Bible says he hasn't changed. And they said, you, I don't believe. They said, I don't believe that. I don't believe that God still heals. And I said, well, they hadn't been sick enough. Boy, I'm telling you. When you get sick enough, you'll believe it. But not only that, I, I, I began to talk to him. And he said, well, that's, that, that's one of the gifts. It's done gone. Let me tell you something. I serve a God that's still able to heal right now at this moment. As the very day that he looked to the blind man said, go wash in that pool called Siloam. And he come back a seeing. I serve the same God that whenever he walked by those little crippled legs and he said, rise up and walk. And they took up that bed and walked. I I serve the same God. Oh, when Peter and John was walking into the temple by that gate called Beautiful, and there was that lame man. And old Peter looked at him and he looked at John and he looked up and he said, silver and gold have I none. But such as I, matter of fact, they were going to prayer meeting. You know why? They needed some more oil. Amen. (laughs) Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ. Rise up and walk. And the Bible says, I didn't say it, but the Bible says, USA Today didn't say it, CNN didn't say it, Fox News didn't say it, MSNBC didn't say it, the Clay County Progress didn't say it, Cherokee Scout didn't say it, listen, Towns County Herald didn't say it, Union County Press didn't say it, but the infallible in there, word of God said that that man got up, and when he got up, he went walking, he went leaping, he went praising God, and the same God that moved moved on the blind man and the same God that moved on the lame man is the same God that can move on you today. Hallelujah. There's nothing too big. Matter of fact, what if they die? I'm glad that I serve a God that can stand at the mouth of death and cry live and they live again. He calls them by name and they come out and when they come out, they are loosened and let go. Has anybody been loosened today? Have you been let go today? Bless God, I'm telling you, I feel the Lord in this place. Brother Philip and I had a talk the other day, and we were talking about a friend of ours. And he was saying, you know, so-and-so, he, he's, he's a little worried. And I said, I know. I said, he said, but I feel like it's going to be all right. And I said, I do too. He said, I got a phone call one day. He said, it was from a friend of mine out in Montana. He said, we'd rode horses everywhere together. His friend called him and said, doctor said, I've got cancer. He said, I'm sure of it. He said, I meet up with it. He ain't got so long to live. And Philip said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to call some prayer warriors. He called some prayer warriors in this church. He got lifted up in the prayer room. And that man went from Monday to be checked out. And that next week when he went in, they took his picture. They found nothing. There was nothing there. You know why? Because God showed up. That's why. That ain't the first time. Praise be unto God. My good friend Cecil Harden, he had some health issues, and he he had um, a place in his arm, and it was bad. It, it was one of those uh, one of them embolisms that he had, <laughs> embolism in his arm, and and the doctor had not even 
had done a surgery like this before. He said, I've never even seen it before. He had two in his arm and up in his chest. And the doctor said, well, I, I think I can fix it. And you know what? Old Brother Cecil said, you pray. Get people to pray. And, and you know what? I went and seen him the other day. He said, I've not even taken a pain pill. You know why? Because the same God showed back up again. Amen? He's still moving today. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Bless the name. He's our divine physician. And, and not only that, I'm glad that, that he is the one who has promises. And that promise is his presence. Aren't you glad for the presence of the Lord? Yeah. Hey, when the choir was up here singing, when I, when I came in, and I'm telling you, it was just one of those days. We, we, we went and picked up a, a young man for church this morning. And it seemed like we, we couldn't get motivated. We had a late night last night, and I'll tell you about that in the very end of the message. But I'm going to tell you something. Even though you may be going through something, no matter what it is, sickness, pain, disease, death, the Lord's present with you if you're saved. <clears throat> Hebrews 13, 5, he's not going to leave you. He's not going to forsake you, but he, he promises some things. The great psalm tells us life in this psalm that though through our shepherd, rather, that it says this, for thou art with me. Brother Jim, I know your sister's going through a tough time right now. Brother Jim, even in the midst of that cancer, the Lord says, I'm with you. Amen. And we as his sheep can cry out, thou art with me. You're with me, and what a peace that it brings. He walks beside us through the dark valleys. He walks with us over the rough roads. Why? Because he loves us. No enemy's too strong for him. There's no problem that he cannot solve. There's no mountain that he can't climb or he can't move or can't cast out of our way. There's no river that he can't cross, that he can't bridge, and that he can't part. Praise the Lord. I'm talking about the Lord. He's beside us. He's with us. He's our blessed companion. I got to thinking about many of our soldiers on the battlefields over the years. Young men and even young women that have been out in a bloodbath of a war. Been out there on the field of battle. And I, I remember many years ago when I first started preaching... There was an old preacher by the name of Maze Jackson. And Maze told a story about a young soldier boy from Arkansas. And he said that in World War II, he said, that young boy was there and they needed a flag put up on a pole. And he said, men, would somebody go? One man went and shot down. A few hours later, would another man go? Another one shot down. Another man, would you go? He went and they killed him as well. And he said, would somebody go? We need somebody to go. Now's the time. We need to go. And there was a young soldier said, sir. He said, yes. Yes, private. And he said, if you'll wait for another 45 minutes, he said, I'll go put that flag on that pole. And the captain said, well, why don't you go now? He said, just, just trust me. 45 minutes at that time. I'll let you know. I'll go. I'll take that flag. I'll put that flag on that pole and everything will be all right. And sure enough, they waited and the men wondered, what in the world is he doing? And finally, that time came. It ticked, 45 minutes was up. He said, Captain, I'm ready. He gave him the flag. And that young soldier, he run out with bullets flying all around him, grenades going off and missiles coming in. And he went and he took that flag. He put it on that, he climbed that pole and put that flag up there and run back. And they said, how in the way were rejoicing, victory had come to the camp. And they said, well, how did you make it? He said, well, he said, the reason I waited, he said, I got an old Christian mama back in Arkansas, back across the water. And she said, at 430 every day, son, I'm going to be behind the old wood cook stove praying for you. Well, glory. Praise be unto God. There wasn't a bullet made by man or the devil that could hit that young soldier whenever he went and hung that flag on that pole. He give honor unto the Lord. I remember Dr. Homer Wilson telling about how 
that during World War II and he got out of that tank and he, he was wandering around there and he said, I heard the voice of my captain telling me to get back in that tank and he went and got in that tank and sure enough, uh, something went off that would have killed him instantly and he asked his captain, he said, boy, I appreciate you or told him, I appreciate you telling me. He said, I didn't call you but bless God, it wasn't his captain here. It was his captain there. You know why? Because God had a plan for him to be nearly 60 years on the radio spreading the gospel, pastoring for over 60 years and leading people to the Lord. And he also paved the way for your pastor and this church to be on the radio and partner with, oh, thank God, Brother Radford, ain't God good that God uses people like that. Give praise where praise is due. Not only that, I got to thinking about a movie that came out here recently. Hacksaw Ridge, Okinawa, Japan. Young man, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to enlist in the army. I want to be a, a medic. I want to save lives. And they said, you got it. He went through all the basic training and everything. They said, you, you've got to carry a gun. He said, I'm not carrying a gun. Now, I would carry a gun. I'd carry two, three. And four or five knives. I'd be strapped up all the way around. There would nobody want to mess with me. But he just chose. He just said, I, I just want to save people's lives. He was court-martialed over it. He went to jail over it, everything. But finally, he got released and he went into this war. And when he went in, this, this Hacksaw Ridge in Okinawa, Japan, was a 400-foot cliff that was treacherous. Treacherous, and, and it, was, it was a key to winning the battle here at Okinawa. And you know what he did? He prayed. It was so bad. He said, God, help me. And you know what he did? It was so bad out there. People died everywhere. He climbed that mountain. He got up there, and he'd go rescue one, and then he'd bring it back. And here's what he said. I would pray and say, God, help me get one more. And so what he'd do, he'd go back again. He'd get another one. Let him down by a big rope all the way down, 400 feet. He'd go back again. And he'd say, Lord, give me one more. And by the end of that thing, 75 men had their life had been saved because one man called on God to help him. Aren't you glad that reminds me of Jesus? You know what? He came as a lamb. He opened not his mouth as a lamb led to the slaughter. And he came to this wicked world to save you and I. He climbed a big old mountain called Calvary. Oh, he, oh my God. In heaven, help us right now. I feel the Holy Ghost climbing up and down the back fence of my soul. He climbed a big mountain called Calvary. And he had all the way to the sin on his back on the cross. And he got up there and he took nails in his hands and his feet for you and for me. And you know what? He didn't say, God, let me go save one more. He said, Father, let me save them all. Amen. Praise God. God's not willing that any should perish, but that all would come unto repentance. Hallelujah. We ought to rejoice right now that we just got a Savior that was willing to climb that mountain and be willing to save us all because some like me ain't fit saving. I ain't fit saving. I'm not fit to be here preaching. I'm not fit for it. I'm not fit. I've, I've cried out, Lord, Lord, ain't you got somebody else? I'm just no country boy down here, Lord. God, you've, surely you got somebody. And you know what he said? Just do what I told you to do. Praise God, and I'm just going to keep preaching. I'm just going to keep climbing every little mountain I can, and I'll say, Lord, give me one more. When one got saved, old Friday night, we was out there at the Ralph Sexton tent meeting, and I got hung up between two little boys, one about 10-year-old, another on this side, about 8-year-old. And I'm telling you what, I said, boys, are you saved? Yes, sir. Well, what are you praying for? That one on the left said, I'm praying for my grandma and my grandpa. They'll be saved. I said, God bless you, son. What about you? 
He said, I'm praying for my aunt. She's lost. She needs to be saved. And I'm telling you, them two boys began to call on God, and they began to cry out, and they were screaming for God to save them. Big tears are flying all over that altar and over that sawdust. And you know what? I got convicted. I said, Lord, give me the same tears that these two little boys has got on each side of this altar, calling out for their family members to be saved. You know what? If we'll do that, God promises his presence to be with us when Ever we do that. Amen. Amen. Oh my. Don't even know where I'm at this morning. Divine providence. The 23rd Psalm, it, 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 it assures us of divine providence. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Desmond Doss, as he went and saved those 75 men, he had to have the presence of God. He had to have some goodness and mercy following him. Think about that. And the Bible promises us that goodness and mercy will not just follow us on Sunday. Won't just follow us on Christmas or Easter. But will follow us every day. The rest of our Lives. Matter of fact, all of our days, God's goodness is with us when the sun shines. He's with us when it rains. He's with us in the storm. He's just simply with us. And His providence is benevolent and it's also beneficial. Goodness and mercy follows us through everything that we face. <laughs> if somebody ever sees something behind you, just say, well, that's goodness and mercy. I've just been saved. I, they're going to follow me the rest of my life. Let me close with this divine prospect. The psalm climaxes with the promise of great prospect. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> it kind of rings a bell for you, doesn't it? We are so... Temporally minded that often we miss the greater blessings in this world. And through this psalm, we've got life. We know John 10 and 10 says that I've, I've come that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. We're going to have an abundant life here. We're going to have an, I don't even know if you could describe the life we're going to have there. For the Bible, the Bible says that I hath not seen, nor ear heard what God has prepared for them that love him. Anybody love him in the house? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Hasn't even entered. So, you know, you know that's what that, this is what tells me. This is what that tells me. You know, you know how wicked the world is. We all know that, right? You know some of the horror uh, stories and films that they put out today and they, all these artists draw these things that are just awful. I mean, demons that you never, I mean, how in the world could somebody draw that? Well, they're influenced by a dark spirit to draw those things. But then you look at the good side. When people draw heaven. They draw the streets of gold. You get on Google and you can Google heaven and images. And I mean, just, just look at some of the great things that artists have, have painted and put out there for us to enjoy. But the Bible says <laughs> what heaven really is, no one can even imagine the beauty and the glory and the majesty and the peace and the holiness that is there. Can't even, can't hear, can't see, can't think what it's going to be like. But I can promise you this, it's going to be good. Yeah. Don't miss heaven. Don't miss it. We're victors in this race that we're in. I was, um, I got a call last night about 1130. And... I got my stuff and I headed out the door and Miss Faye 
McCray's grandson who fought a fight for so many years, 29 years old. And probably the last, I don't know, 10, 12 years, he just fought to live. He had a debilitating brain disease. And, and I remember taking, some of the boys are, are here this morning that was on that team. I think Dylan and Kellen and, and Braden and Kellen and Hayton, um, Briggs, was on that was on that team, and we all we got we got a bunch of kids together that was on a baseball team, and we had won a championship. And I said, guys, I ain't trying to tell you what to do. I said, but I got something good I'd like to incorporate with your team. I said, if we go visit this young man, that's 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 in bad shape, and you y'all give him that baseball. Just said, we want to give you this. And and though he was older, he he was like a kid, like he he watched. Uh, cartoons all the time. He had little trucks and little things, you know, little things for like, like a four-year-old would have just to tell you about how this disease had, had affected him. And, and those boys went in that little bedroom and, and took him. And I'm going to tell you, and they were nine years old, I believe, at that time, six years ago. And they went into that little boy, and they, they gave him that baseball and they were all decked out in their uniforms standing around there. And they just said, we want to give you this. And we want to pray with you. And boy, we had prayer for that young man that was sick. He couldn't feed himself. He couldn't, got, he couldn't even walk. And he'd just, just grunt and say, thank you. And we prayed. Well, last night, and Brother Kyle met there and a couple other preachers were there. We met in that home. And little Matthew that had that debilitating brain disease. And little Matthew that couldn't walk and couldn't got to where he couldn't talk and, 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 and laid there, eat up with infection for, the, for, for, for years now. Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you know what happened? God said, that's enough. I'm going to reach down. And life in the psalm, he picked him up and brought him home to be with him. I can see little Matthew right now kicking up the gold dust on the streets of glory. Confined to that bed with, all, with, with, with tubes and medicines. Listen, he's not hurting anymore. Matthew has a brand new body. And Matthew is enjoying his life with the psalmist himself, the one who wrote these, these psalms in which we're reading today. Matthew's with him. And see, the promise is you and I can be there too. When the funeral home came and they put him on the, on the little gurney and began to take him out. And I said, he's leaving the house, but he's already made it home. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Praise be unto our Lord. As we bow our heads and get a song of invitation, let's pray for that family, though, Philip and Becky and Sister Faye. Faye attends church here. Let's lift her up. If you're here today and you'd say, you know what, preacher, I'm, I'm sin sick. I, I am lost. I know that I'm lost. I know if I died right now, I would not go to heaven. There's... there's Things in my life that separated me even further from the church and from my family and friends. You just lost. Could you slip your hand up and by that say, Brother Chris, I'm not saved. Would you pray for me when you pray? I won't embarrass you or come to you. Is there one man, woman, boy, or girl? I'm lost. Pray for me. God bless your hand. I see you. I see your hand. God bless you. Maybe someone else, I've been saved, but I'm just not where I ought to be with Jesus. Brother Chris, I want that goodness and mercy close to me. I want to be close to the shepherd. 
And I feel convicted over some things in my life right now. Would you, Christian friend, would you lift up your hand and say, that's me. God, God spoke to me about some things in my life. Things I've said or done. God bless you. God bless you. Others in the house, just be honest. There's some things in my life that shouldn't be there. Or maybe there's some things that's not in my life that should be there. And I need God's help. I haven't been faithful like I ought to be. God's convicted me. God bless your hands. Now before we come pray, if you raised your hand and said, I'm lost. His heads are bowed. I want you to look just look up here at me. Just me and you. I'm lost. Will you be saved today? Would you get help? Maybe you just need prayer. Maybe you've tried and tried and tried. Would you come? Those of you Christians that said, I've got some things in my life that shouldn't be there. Would you come pray right now? I know in our, our, our young people section, I saw some hands. Why don't you be obedient? Kind Jesus, have your way right now in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. As these are coming, as we stand to our feet, would you come help pray? Oh, God. God bless her, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Sister Crystal. Yes, thank you, God. God bless him. Oh, God. Others, you need to come pray. Would you come? Only just a while. Come on, God, touch him, Jesus, touch him. Oh, Jesus. Please, Lord Jesus, touch, Lord. Yes, God, move, Lord. God, touch him, Jesus. Come on over here. As, there, as we have one sister, she said, I need to be anointed today. God knows all about it. And I know Amanda wanted to come be anointed. Come on right now. If you, if you need anointed, Brother Ed's going to have surgery on Tuesday. I'll ask our ordained to come gather around these that are coming and something I wanted to I wanted to tell I felt compelled that there's a lot of things that I said today I didn't plan on saying and I like it like that there's a lot of things I did write down I, I wanted to say but that part in the verse that says my, my cup runneth over a lot of people don't really even know what that's talking about around the top of those wells over in the holy land there were cups down in those stones and that shepherd would draw out that water and he'd go around the top of that well and he would pour that water in every cup until it flooded. And that shepherd, that good shepherd would allow his sheep to drink till they were content. A hireling would take those sheep and they'd drink a little bit and he'd shove them out of the way. But not the good shepherd. He let them drink. You drink this morning. As our ordainer here, how many of you believe that God can touch these that's come for prayer? Amen. If you don't believe, we ask you to step out during this prayer. We don't want any hindrance. God is good. Amen. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Praise the name of Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. You're standing in for a friend that has cancer, right? Debbie. Debbie McCraw, we're going to pray.
Oh, praise God. Kind Jesus, Lord God, we come before your throne of grace. Lord, this dear lady has come seeking anointing, Lord. God, that she might be able, Lord, to be touched by your hand. God, I pray that you touch her right now. God, I pray, Lord, from the top of her head, Lord, of the sole of her feet. God, I pray that you touch her mind right now. God, touch her body and touch her soul. Lord, we know that you're able to do all things, Lord, and we're looking to you right now to do these things, Lord. God, anoint her. Lord, I pray that you heal her. Lord, bring joy to her. <laughs> we bind the enemy right now by the blood of the Lamb. Lord, with your stripes, may she be healed. Oh, God, we pray for Brother Ed, Lord. Jesus, we pray that you touch him. God, we pray, Lord, that you move upon him. God, we pray that the Holy Ghost, Lord, would rest upon our dear brother. Lord, as he goes in for, for surgery on Tuesday, God, we pray, Lord, that it would be simple. God, we just pray, Lord, that you would move on him. Lord, take away fear. God, we just give you the glory for it now. With your stripes, Lord, may be healed. God, we pray for this lady. Lord Jesus, that Amanda loves and cares for. Lord, that's battling cancer. God, we know that you're able. And God, we pray right now, Lord, that you would heal her. We bind this cancer by the blood of the Lamb. We curse it to the root. God, we speak life, Lord, right now. God, we plead, Lord, with you right now to hear our cry. God, Amanda's done everything that she knows to do, Lord, for this lady. And God, now we ask, Lord, that you perform a miracle as only you can do. Lord, we touch and agree right now, Lord, that you will, that you can. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, Lord, in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen, Amen, and Amen. Yes, give the Lord praise. Bless you. Yes, man. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God, help me. Come on, gentlemen. Come on back. What do you need from the Lord? Got divers articulitis. We know a man who can. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Kind Jesus. God, I pray for this sister right now. God, we bind this divers articulitis right now by the blood of the Lamb. God, set her free. Lord, I pray right now. God, we call on you in the mind. God, that you touch her. She God, has done exactly, Lord, God, Lord, what you ask her to do from the Word of God in James chapter 5. Lord, she's called on you. Lord, we even now anointed her. God, your Word says the prayer of faith shall save the sick. And if they've committed any sin, it shall be forgiven them. Oh, God, right now. God, I touch heaven right now through the holy estate of prayer and believe, Lord, right now. Lord, touch her. Touch her. Lord, like she's never been touched. <laughs> oh, God, just breathe on her right now. Touch this side. Touch her. Touch this body. May it be done in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, Lord. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen. amen, amen, and amen. Let's give God more praise for this.
Christ and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Lord, touch him in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Love you guys. Love you, brother. Good to And all the time, God is. Yes, he is. Thank you for being here today. And we, we bless the name of Jesus above all names. Amen. Um, real quick, before we let you out, next week's going to be homecoming. And we, we want you to be here. We want you to bring your friends, your family. It's going to be a great time. We look forward to it every year. And so we'll have dinner after the service. And also... That evening will be the primitive quartet. It's going to be singing, and, and we, just, we just want to we want to get everybody that we can on board for next Sunday, okay? So if you've been coming, you've got family that maybe they're not going to church anywhere, try to get them to come be with you next Sunday. It's going to be a great time. Brother Keith, we'll, we'll, you don't want to miss him preaching our homecoming service. And then the primitive quartet, I can't say enough about them. They're just great guys. I'm going to be here. Brother Lucas? Uh, yeah, just a few announcements. Um, the youth will be singing at the Union County Nursing Home today. Lunch will be served after church in the Family Life Center for any youth who want to stay. They'll be leaving around 2 to depart for the nursing home and will return promptly after the service. Uh, you can pick up your child after, afterwards or there'll be a movie played for anyone who wants to stay at the church until the 6 o'clock service. Also, youth choir practice will be held every other Sunday after church and will be over at 4 p.m., Lunch will be provided for the youth on these practice days. If you have any questions on that, please see uh, Matthew Roach. also have a card here. It says a card, card of thanks with warmest thanks and grateful hearts and deep appreciation for your thoughtfulness. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for always being here for us. Thank you, First Free Will, for beautiful cards, calls, and flowers. Most of all, for the prayers during um, uh, Brother Ben's mom's passing. We yes. love and appreciate you all you do for us. Amen. And that's from Ben, Jackie, Travis, and Sean. So still praying for your family. Um, also, Brother Israel wanted me to announce that Thank on you. Thursday, August the 30th, the Jim Brady Trio will be at Metagrove Baptist Church, um, and that will be at 7 o'clock. So that's on a Thursday evening, August the 30th. So uh, he for sure wanted to help, uh, wanted us to announce that, and he's also uh, talk, promoting our uh, primitive quartet being here at our church, at, at his church. So um, feel free to support that. Also, there will not be choir practice today. Uh, for the adult choir. All right. Isn't it good to have Brother Kyle back with us? Amen. Amen. Missed him when he's gone. Love him. Appreciate him. Check Facebook. We'll give out a call them all as soon as we find out the arrangements for the funeral service. I'm supposed to be in Tennessee, Lansing, Tennessee, all week preaching. So we'll, we're going to have to juggle some things around uh, to try to meet everyone's needs. So um, let's, let's pray that God will bless the revival. And my good buddy, Brother Roger Duncan's going to be there and his son. So, so we're thankful for that. And Sister Diane's doing better. We praise the Lord. Well, let's get our hands up in the air. Oh, Brother Joe's pointing for something. Got a barbecue meeting at 5 o'clock today. All right. Thank you for that. Now, that seems like I'm missing something now. Let's see. That's bad. They said, oh, camp meeting, the 14th through the 19th, and also the car show, the Jacqueline Chris car show. What's the date on that? 13th? On the 13th, the, the day before our camp meeting. So we want to, if you've got an old car or something, well, you need to come be a part of that anyway. It's going to be a lot of fun. And we, you'll hear more about that coming up. Let's get our hands up in the air and exercise. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. May God bless you. Have a great day. See you tonight, 6 p.m.